When you asked us to come up with a design that could be used as our mercenary company's primary light mech, I bet you didn't think it would be the fire starter, Commander. But the fact is, the chassis has a number of characteristics that can turn it into one of the best light mechs us mercs can get our hands on. Let's go over the design, and then I'll show you how to turn this hot little mech into a lady-killing stud muffin. Production year, 2550, Star League era. Name, Firestarter, FS9-H. Weight, 35 tons. Faction, All Inner Sphere. Role, Multi-Role Anti-Personnel Scout Mech. One of the most popular mechs in the Inner Sphere, the Firestarter H is armed with four Purity L-Series Flamers, one on each arm and two in the center torsos, one of which is rear-facing. It has two Deepris RF machine guns, one on each torso, and two Magnamark medium lasers, one on each arm. It's on the upper end of tonnage for a light mech, coming in at 35 tons, which means it can qualify as part of being a light lance without an issue, pack enough weapons to bring the pain, and have enough armor to come back in one piece. The chassis is also quite balanced, with no glaring flaws, and comes with a cowl, which is a nice little bonus to help protect shots to the head. The design is actually the fourth most common light mech available for purchase for us mercenaries, sitting at about 8.5% of all light mechs on the market. It is also used and maintained by all major houses in the inner sphere, usually attached at the company or regimental level for anti-infantry, scouting, or fire setting tactics. This ubiquitous nature is an often overlooked but major logistical benefit for us mercenaries. It means wherever we go, we'll be able to easily acquire replacement parts for the unit. Even if we were to accept a contract in the periphery, Commander, we shouldn't have any problems maintaining our fire starters. Offensively, while the stock fire starter is outstanding in its anti-personnel role, able to reliably destroy a full-strength infantry platoon in a single turn, against other mechs, the fire starter is underwhelming. With only two medium lasers, it struggles to open a hole in the enemy mech's armor, and after it does, it needs to close the two hexes in order to use its machine guns and flamers to try and exploit that hole. This makes the fire starter a bit needy in the movement phase, often wanting to be the mech who takes the last turn in order to safely maneuver to a spot where it can use its weapons and can't get hit. Its true power, however, lies in its eight hard points, the highest out of any light mech. This means we'll be able to easily configure the fire starter for most any weapons mix we need. Combined with its speed, it uniquely positions the fire starter to carry multiple small weapon systems, which turn it into a deadly knife fighter. More on this later. Defensively, the stock fire starter is acceptable, but not outstanding. It has four key locations that its armor needs to protect. The legs, in order for it to use its speed as a light mech, the center torso, where the most expensive components lie, and the right torso, which houses a ton of ammunition. While it has enough armor to block a single hit from a large laser on all of these critical locations, it cannot take any more of that on the legs. I would have liked to see an armor rebalance, at the very least, taking away from the head and the left torso, to protect the more often hit leg location. The mech already has a protective cowl, which helps deflect the rare headshots. Moving on to mobility, we can see the fire starter is quite good as a scout. The benchmark we use to judge scout mechs is the ability to move faster than the well-armed and commonly seen recon mech, the Phoenix Hawk. With its speed, a large laser, and good armor, this mech is a big threat that other scout mechs are forced to play around. The fire starter keeps pace with the Phoenix Hawk, meaning that it cannot get chased down in a fight as long as it moves away before the bigger mech can get in range with its large laser. Having the same movement profile as the Phoenix Hawk also means the fire starter pairs well with it on scouting missions. They can move seamlessly together as a unit during these types of operations. Taking all these factors into account, Commander, I would rate the stock fire starter an overall B-tier mech. While it's flawed offensively and not particularly outstanding defensively, its movement allows it to scout well. It also fills a key role in a company or regiment by acting as a deadly anti-infantry mech. If we wanted to take a look at stock variants that have a bit more bite offensively, I would take a look at the A variant, but I think the mech techs and I have cooked up something that's even better than that. But before we go over that, let me brief you on how our pilot should use the standard version if we do decide to take it into battle as is. In its anti-infantry role, the fire starter only needs to remember to keep the infantry platoons it's engaging outside of its rear arc. It should not dive into the middle of multiple platoons to try and take out key SRM carrying infantry, but instead fight them front to back, engage at an angle such that it bypasses the others, or rotate its facing with its jump jets as it goes in. While the H variant has enough flamers and machine guns to reliably kill platoons at either one or two hexes, the more anti-mech oriented A variant should close to one hex, 
or be prepared to take a significant amount of return fire by any surviving infantry. When going up against other mechs, the fire starter should aim to always move at 5 or more hexes to maintain its plus 2 modifier to get hit. It should always try to fight alongside with another mech and patiently skirmish with its two medium lasers at 5 or fewer hexes while it waits for an opportunity to strike. When it has the initiative, it should close to 1-2 to two hex range before either alpha striking or firing as many weapons as it can while keeping its heat below 5 in order to be able to maximize its movement. With that being said, let's go over to the mech bay and I'll show you a refit that's going to turn some heads. We're designating this experimental fire starter, MERC-X1, and naming it Heartbreaker for its ability to tear out internal components and make Liren traditionalists cry by removing all the flamethrowers. While some mech purists may cry heresy, we believe the fire starter is the right kind of sinner to release your inner fantasies. This change is intended to transform the fire starter from a specialist incendiary mech into a multi-role scout striker that will become the main light mech that's deployed by our mercenary companies. The refit increases endurance, damage, and penetration, all while maintaining its anti-infantry capabilities. For this refit, we dropped all the flamers and replaced them with additional two medium lasers and four machine guns. We have the ammo, which still allows a luxurious 16 turns of shooting, and use the weight we cleared up to increase the armor by half a ton. The refit is extremely cheap, costing only 110,000 sea bills, or about the cost of a large laser. While it does take 14 days, a bit longer than usual, we believe the benefits are well worth it. It's only a Class D facility level refit, meaning we can get it done at any transport bay, field workshop, or mobile field base. The additional half ton of armor goes a long way towards improving the fire starter's endurance. All critical locations are now protected by at least 12 points of armor, which will block a PPC shot and follow up SRM combo that tries to pierce our armor and then crit us out. While it still wants to get into rears or the sides of open locations with its whopping 10 potential critical hits, it is now much less greedy during the initiative because of its four medium lasers. This doubles the potential damage from 10 to 20, allowing it to skirmish comfortably at 3 to 6 hexes rather than always needing to get close. Pilots can choose either one of two firing patterns, either shooting three medium lasers constantly, or alternating between shooting four lasers when the opportunity presents itself, and two lasers while they focus on maneuver. Because of the reduced anti-infantry weapons, the mech should play like the A variant and only engage infantry platoons at one hex, unless it wants to take a bit of return fire. While the mech can no longer set forest fires or heat up other mechs, if you subscribe to this channel, you'll see in our later videos that that role is covered by other designs. Overall, I think this refit's benefits to firepower and defense outweigh that minor utility. And if someone from one of the great houses gives us a hard time by pointing out that our medium mechs and that the fire starter is the one that's starting forest fires, use our little heartbreaker to jump behind their heavies and rip out all their internal components, and then tell them, well, my fire starter may not have any flamers, but in the end, you still got burned. Yeah, we ran out of patience. Boy, you're with the cold heart.